everyone, welcome back to another Doctor Who news video where today we're going to be going over some potential missing episodes being found, some new 60th anniversary images, some new Big Finish limitations, as well as a rumour about John Sims' master returning for a children in need sketch. This is a bit of a lighter news video and honestly thank god the last few have been really quite heavy on news but this one's gonna be a lot more laid back, a lot more chill so pull up a chair, grab a drink, subscribe if you're new, that'd be greatly appreciated. We've already just smashed 22,000 subscribers and we're almost at 22,100. We've been growing so extremely well. I can't thank you enough for this. Honestly, it means the world. But with that said, let's get into the news. So this is the big news story that people have been talking about recently. Lost Doctor episodes found, but owner is reluctant to hand them to the BBC. As the sci-fi show's 60th anniversary nears, a collector pleads for BBC to offer amnesty to those with recordings discarded by corporation. For Doctor Who lovers, they are missing the crown jewels. Lost episodes of the first series of the sci-fi drama, shown in the 1960s. But now film recordings of not just one, but two of the early BBC adventures, both featuring the first Dr. William Hartnell, have been found in Britain by amateur sleuths. The episodes, one featuring the Daleks, would offer viewers a chance to travel back in time without the use of a TARDIS, but the Observer has learned that the owners of the rare, rediscovered footage are not prepared to hand it over to the BBC. This is originally from the Observer and has been reiterated by The Guardian. Even as the clock ticks down to the 60th anniversary of the show's launch this month, veteran film collector John Franklin believes the answer is for the BBC to announce an immediate general amnesty on missing film footage. This would reassure British amateur collectors that their private archives will not be confiscated if they come forward and that they will be safe from prosecution for having stored stolen BBC property, something several fear. Some of these collectors are terrified, said Franklin, who knows the location of two missing Doctor Who episodes along with several other newly discovered TV treasures, including an episode of Basil Brush, the second to be unearthed this autumn. We now need to catalogue and save the significant television collection that are out there. If we are not careful, they will eventually be dumped again in house clearances, because a lot of owners of these important collections are now in their 80s and are very wary indeed. Discarded TV film was secretly salvaged from bins and skipped by staff and contractors who worked at the BBC between 1967 and 1978, when the corporation had a policy of throwing out old reels, and Hartnell's Doctor episodes were far from the only ones to go. Many popular shows were lost, and other Doctor adventures starring Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee were either jettisoned or erased. A missing early episode of long-running sitcom Sykes, starring Eric Sykes and Hattie Jacks, has also been rediscovered in private hands in the last few weeks. Franklin, who staged an event entitled Film is Fabulous for Collectors in Leicester last month, with the Cinema and Television History Research Institute at D. Montfort University argues that the BBC is best place to help the collectors involved are ex-employees and are so terrified. The rule was that you didn't take anything, even if it had been thrown out. But if you loved film and it would be important one day, what did you do? So what we need now is an amnesty, he said. Franklin's plea was supported by Mark Stuckey, a film and projector restorer who appears as an electronics expert on the BBC's The Repair Shop. These collectors were seen as criminals, but now we can see they are really saviours. An amnesty would stop them being frightened of prosecution, he said. Last month, the BBC admitted its 800 episode back catalogue of Doctor Who shows, now available on its iPlayer streaming service, would be incomplete. Seven episodes from 1963 have been colourised and woven together into a 75 minute long monster show, The Daleks in Colour which will be shown on BBC4 on the 23rd and will also be made available on iPlay. We welcome members of the public contacting us regarding programmes that they believe are lost archive recordings and are having to work with them to restore lost programmes to the BBC archives. Whether this will be enough to prompt nervous collectors to come forward is doubtful. While collectors are in no real danger, the infamous arrest of comedian Bob Monkhouse in 1978 has not been forgotten. Franklin suspects Monkhouse was a private collector and was accused of pirating videos, he even had some of his archives seized. Sadly, people still believe they could have their collections confiscated. Most of the collectors are not interested in selling, but feel they should not be penalised for storing film for 50 years. If we list all the found footage, we could simply go to an auction house and sell it, which would save some of it, but then it could go anywhere. That seems sad. When there is such a growing interest in celluloid among younger people again, it's become quite fashionable, said Franklin. BBC Studios, the corporation's separate commercial arm, have already spent money animating Hartnell's lost episodes, so surely they could spend a little more on restoring the originals and perhaps pay 
something to these elderly collectors, a few of whom are unwell now or caring for others. Until the recent discoveries, it was believed that 97 of the Doctor episodes were missing from the show's first six years. Chris Perry, head of TV Archive Kaleidoscope, has recently claimed he knows many in private archives that could be returned with the right reassurances. After all, Phil Collinson, executive producer of the new Colorized episode, has attested the Hartnell Adventures are a masterpiece of 60s drama, literally the foundational stone of all Doctor Who has become. So yeah, very interesting stuff. Apologies if that was a bit wordy. There was a lot to go over there. So from what I can gather, it seems like there are collectors who have stuff in their collections, but they are afraid to bring them forward in case they are prosecuted by the BBC for holding onto these tapes. Because part of their original contracts, I suppose, as workers of the BBC, was you couldn't take anything home with you, including tapes, even if you knew those tapes were going to be destroyed. It seems like they want to keep their original tapes, but also would be happy to give them to the BBC, maybe for a small fee, I suppose. So they would essentially give the BBC a copy of the episodes, which would be fine, you know, it would work just the same way. Now, I have to confess, I'm not an expert on this stuff. However, I have just seen a tweet from Johnny Morris, who is an established name in the Doctor Who community, saying there are two problems with this article. There already is a well-established amnesty for returning missing film. Anyone afraid to return the BBC material can hand it over to the BFI, who will act as a go-between and preserve the donor's anonymity. Nobody has ever been prosecuted for holding missing BBC material. No individuals, no TV stations. It's never happened. It's a fantasy. Also, apparently, the case that it mentions with regards to Bob Bughouse was dropped and he was exonerated. So it doesn't seem like there's much reason for them not to hand these over if they do indeed have them. So either they just don't want to hand them over or it's a case of they don't actually have the episodes. I have heard very conflicting stuff on this story. And I'll say I'm not an expert on missing episodes. You know, I'm not Josh Nares. Um, but this this piqued my interest. But this piqued my interest because it mentioned two episodes, one of which featuring Daleks, which could be pretty huge. You know, it could be Daleks Master Plan or something like that. I'll continue to see if there's any updates with regards to this story, but it's looking like some more collectors are coming forward saying they have missing episodes, but whether they actually want to give them back is a whole other can of worms. Yesterday, shortly after my previous video, Doctor Who posted some more 60th images. Again, a lot of these came from SFX. We've got this one of Beep the Meep holding what looks like the Satan from the the Rose two-parter, the U two-parter, which is quite fun. And you've got like a lot of art and craft posters. So yeah, this basically confirms that Rose, as in Yasmin Finney's Rose, is an art and craft person. And she's the one making these toys. And then the second one is Donna in this sort of weird little void thing, presumably wildly yonder. Although it does look weirdly like homely as well, so I'm wondering if it's like a little bit of a hallucination thing going on. And then finally, we have this one, a very, very good picture, very good quality of Neil Patrick Harris as the toy maker in his toy makery toy shop realm. It definitely looks bigger than the toy shop does from the outside. So I'm wondering if that's a deliberate thing, you know, that's actually bigger on the inside. It makes sense because the toy maker can manipulate all sorts of space. So I think that would make total sense. Now, this is interesting. There's a Doctor Who leak with regards to Big Finish. Essentially, there is a new Unbound box set happening with David Bradley. But the reason this is happening is supposedly because there are going to be new limitations set on Big Finish when it comes to Doctor usage and things like that. So apparently, it was confirmed to the Who division that the decision to do a Bradley-led Unbound has come out of restrictions imposed upon them. The restrictions form strong guardrails on who can meet who, as well as halt new incarnations from being devised, and have been part of increased frustrations. Further individuals have claimed to the Who Division that these new restrictions have resulted in the scrapping of entire Twelfth Doctor Chronicles, in which the Twelfth Doctor would cross over with a classic era Doctor, and that there may have been rewrites to the last unit box set and River Song related to this. We'll bring any further claims as we receive them. So this is a bit of a controversy. Basically, it seems like the BBC or the higher-ups are imposing more limits on what Big Finish can actually do. And I think I might be in the minority on this. I don't know. I've seen people kind of debating this on both ends. I think this might be for the best. Now, I know people will say, oh, but we should let, you know, these people have the creative freedom to make whatever they want. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's the BBC's property. If they want to stop them making certain stories, they can. You know, it's the same reason why they're not able to do anything with regards to new Doctors whilst they're filming until their eras have ended. That is a limitation that's been set on Big Finish for pretty good reason, I would argue. And in the case of this, I can't help but feel that Big Finish has got a little bit 
crossover happy over the last few years. I mean, the amount of multi-Doctor stuff and random crossovers with, like, Lady Christina D'Souza, Jackie Tyler, the Sixth Doctor, and Harry Sullivan. Like, it's, it's so random and bizarre, and sometimes it does just feel like they do these bizarre crossovers to kind of sell audios. To me, that's how it comes across. Obviously, I'm not saying that these stories are necessarily terrible, but I do think actually working within limitation can often create better stories than having an unlimited pool of things to access. The same thing could definitely be said for something like Midnight, right? We know that Russell had a very small budget to make that, and it ended up being, in my opinion, one of the best Doctor Who stories ever made, especially in New Who. So yeah, I can't help but actually feel like this is for the best. I think some limitation is needed personally, but you're free to disagree with me on that. Now, this is a bizarre one. Doctor Who Production News has posted this, which is two hearts plus sign, yellow sign plus bandage plus teddy bear, so i.e. children in need, implying that John Sim is going to be making an appearance in the children in need mini-sode, which we know for definite will feature the 14th Doctor releasing on the 17th. Now, I have seen a couple of other people speculate this prior to this, but it's interesting to have Doctor Who production news specifically talk about this, because they tend to only talk about stuff that gets confirmed, so I'm wondering what's led them to tweet this. I can't, of course, say that it's definitely true, but I do remember back when Russell was being announced, John Sim being one of the more vocal people in the Instagram comments, so it's not impossible that he could come back to do a mini thing. I'm not sure what the plot would be, although an older John Sim meeting an older David Turner Doctor would be very fun, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. But that's about all I have time for. If you did enjoy the video, please sure give it a like, comment down below your thoughts on anything we discussed today, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.